what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back to doing some new video guys. Today I'm here. My pastor guys, Pastor Silas is here again. I'm Pastor Silas. Oh, my name is Pastor Silas and I'm here with the Perseverance. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to the difference between Bible and the Quran. Uh, my Muslim friend is not around, so I brought my pastor here for us to do the video. You know how I do? We talk less right now, we are small. Let's get into this video. Yesterday you proved that the Bible was not the word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you, says there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just pick, took a pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic, the same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. From among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed. Is that from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. 
See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been done all this last night. But this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving, and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. you see? Then there is the prophet, word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, so while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember, if you were there, I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first. Maybe he had no time. And somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a keel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation. He was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, so <laughs> There is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiance if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is, there's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet ﷺ that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. 
These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So they said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid al Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he offered the masjid to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us, we, are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the masjid the Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt, in construction, yes. He allowed them, gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, so, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that. Then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad press buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, who Allahu Ahad. He is Allah the one and only. Allahu Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, Oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. He doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, What is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, What is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? Six? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From Fi Lawham Mahfuz, from the preserved tablet, from the head computer. See? He's in contact. He's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya Bari Ta'ala is communicating. What shall I say? He says, say. Allahu Ahad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul hu Allahu Ahad. Say, is Allah the one and only? Allahu Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufu wa ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was, what was the occasion, what, how did it come about, nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else, where the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened, people who are eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening, what our Nabi said, what happened, all that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah, great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? You know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness. <laughs> ah, jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire. Right, they're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, the Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it, and I enjoyed it very much. Was a young boy. Oh, I loved it, you know. <laughs> the unexpurgated editions. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the Prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. 
So we have the words of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. <laughs> what do you think of this one? The Bible, which is our Bible, our holy book, which is our manual for living. It's not just a book of history. Although I, I said, I said, I think I said it here before. Um, even though it's, even though you can find history in the book, even though you can find um, stories in the book, the book from Genesis to Revelation talks about a person, Jesus. It's a revelation of Jesus. Now, um, in English, English language, the book it just has just one layer, just the one layer. That's why uh, it will take. Um, the Spirit of God and a supernatural help to actually um, get the life out of it. So he said, the, Paul said something, he said, the letter, that is this one's reading it like this, it kills. But the Spirit gives life. The Spirit of it gives life. Now, in the Hebrew, the Bible is, um, is in seven layers. I know of um, just few preachers that have... Um, actually got into the fifth layer of the Bible in Hebrew. Yes, I know just a few preachers that have got into the fifth or sixth layer of the Bible. And this one, they had to, you know, employ some Hebrew teachers to actually teach them. In the Hebrew Bible, the first layer talks about the generations. You see the, you see the generations. Uh -huh. And the second layer talks about the history. Then the third layer talks about some other things. And then the fourth layer, I think the fourth layer, and then the fifth layer, the sixth layer, and seventh layer, those ones began to reveal the details of Jesus right. in the Bible. Let's pick the story of Joseph. Joseph, the father sold him what? A cloth of what? Many colors. John 3.16, the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But he is saying that the father doesn't have any begotten. He mentioned it. I, I kept that. Now, let's speak the story of Joseph. What is the story of Joseph? Born into a family, hated by his brothers, loved by his father, was thrown into the pit. Taken out of the pit, he was sold to Egypt. Sold into Egypt. He was thrown into prison. We are counting it. Up. Was thrown into prison. Thrown into prison, he was brought out and was given a throne to rule as a prime minister and was given one of the daughters of Pharaoh yeah. to wife. And he ruled over his brethren again. He was reconciled to his brethren again. Let's come down. Let's bring it down. I will show you that. I will show you. This is in the Hebrew. And I will show you Jesus in this illustration, in this story. Joseph, loved by his father. Jesus, loved by the father. For God so loved the world. This is in Hebrew. That he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Was loved by the father. Hated by his brother. He was sent to the world. He was killed by the very people he came to save. True. Thrown into the pits. I remember in the same, in, in the Gospels, they, they said they took his coat of many colors, right? Remember that they, they ripped him off. He was naked hanging on that cross. Mm. He was thrown into the pit. That was when he died. He was sold into Egypt. That was when he resurrected. And in that resurrection, he went to hell. When he went to hell, that was when he was sold into Egypt. And then in Egypt, he was thrown into the prison. He went to hell to collect the keys. He came out. It was in his coming out, that resurrection that God gave him authority and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Remember the glory he told the Father about? Restored as Jesus, mm. the King in heaven, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Remember in, in Paul, Paul the Apostle mentioned that. Sure. Seated at the right hand of the Father, giving a gentle wife. Who is the gentle wife? The church. Pharaoh's daughter. Remember that it was, we are God's children. And then that his ascension now reconciled us to him. As his bride, and we are called the bride of Christ. Remember, I said Pharaoh giving his daughter to Joseph. Yeah. Joseph sitting at the hands of authority. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, authority, rulership, and then reconciled to his brethren, reconciled to the world. So now anybody can assess God. Anybody can go and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, and he accepts them. 
So he actually, if oh my God, if you read the um, Bible with, you see the issue is this: um, most of these folks they approach the Bible with with an ideology. They approach the Bible with an ideology to pick a point. At that point, the God that I serve, the God that I know, the God working in me, we allow you. He, in fact, he even give you to a reprobate mind. Go and keep deceiving yourself. I dare you. I dare you, whoever watching this video, I dare you to go to the Bible with an open spirit. Open your mind up and then genuinely say, God, I want to know what is here. I tell you in the next seven days, I give you seven days, I put the Bible and say, Lord, whatever ideas I have, I lay it aside. I want to approach the Bible. I want to know what is in this Bible. I'm telling you the truth. Light will break out. That's true. Light will break out. You want you see certain things, and the, and it's always so with God. That's why when Moses came to God and when in 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 Mount Sinai when he saw the burning bush, God told him to take off his shoes. The shoes there spoke about the fact that oh you have you have walked certain areas, you walked certain corridors, you know things. At this point, when you come to me, drop it. You must come. As someone who wants to know God, it's only at that point God reveals what is here for you. Some of the truths I speak to you, I did not, I had to humble myself and I ask God, God, what is here for me? And he will tell you, Jesus is in all these letters from Genesis to Revelation. Jesus is in it. If you want to find Jesus, you'll find Jesus in it. That's true. I actually asked that. He himself is feeling like, uh, Christian, we summarize our Bible as just one book itself. Whereas, which has to do with um, the stories of people, um, Jesus Christ himself, and also, um, what is it called? Theologists. Theologists, okay. They say most of them themselves have different books. The mm. Quran itself speaks basically about God. Mm. Then there's a theologic book, there's a book for this one, there's a book for stories, there's a book of how prophets sleep, how they wake up, how mm -hmm. they eat, and so But we ourselves will summarize everything in one book. You see, and that, that's why the reason why it's summarized in one book is because it's actually talking about somebody. Yeah. So every that's why in fact there are there are there are many stories in the Bible that were were cut short. That if you if you read the Bible, you discover that some of them were in the case. God is trying to actually reveal one person. If you if you study the, the book of Peter, Peter said something. He said um, the Bible was inspired by the Holy Ghost. He spoke through. He sat down. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. He got men who were filled by the Holy Ghost and then inspired them to write it. It's the Holy Spirit that actually inspired the men that wrote this Bible. The Spirit of God is the one that actually inspired the men that actually put some of the things down. You know, they were in scrolls. They were in yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Holy Ghost that made them put it in scrolls. And then they had to compile it and bring the King James, the NIV. Because I found that recently I was making an, I was just really asking myself a question. Why would um, God allow the Bible to, you know, come in different versions? And, and here's one thing that struck me. He said something, he said to me, Remember Jesus, when the um, disciples were trying to stop children from coming to Jesus, and Jesus said, don't stop them from coming. The reason why God allowed this is because everybody can come to him. Nobody should be stopped from coming to him. Nobody should have an excuse why I cannot assess God. That's why he has not locked it. That's why even when the things were in scrolls and in seals, he had to anoint certain men to open those seals and put it in a book like, and then we have King James Version, we have the Message Bible, we have even the PG, the easy to read. Why? Because nobody should have a reason why they cannot access God. God has made it. That's why he's God. That's why he's God. Nobody should have a reason why you say, okay, I couldn't I access don't understand. God. Yes, exactly. It's actually for our benefits. So, if this is a question to those that question about God, why are they in several versions? They are in several versions because God is a spirit. I remember in Acts chapter 2, the Bible said when they began to speak, let's read Acts 2 quickly before I ask 2. I'm sorry I'm taking time. I just need to clear this. There's so much I want to say, so much, because I'm not actually a debater. I'm actually a preacher. I preach the gospel. Acts chapter 2. They, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak 
with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, and they were dwelling at Jew Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Then there was a there was a celebration. That was the day of Pentecost. There was, there was a celebration. Okay. Now when when this was verse six. Now when this was Acts two verse six. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Yeah. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, and not all these which speak Galileans. Now we hear every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. They were marveled. They were marveled because actually God doesn't want anyone to have an excuse why you cannot come to me. So these men heard them speak. See, if you go on, you say, they were all marveled and say one. And then here, every man speaks in our own tongue, where we were born. Persians, Medes, Elamites, Elamites, the dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Judea, in Cappadocia, in Pontius, in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Syria, and strangers of them, Jews and proselytes. Let's go on. I, I thank you, Jesus. Cretans and Arabians. Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and they were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaning this? Others mocking said, These men are full of. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you, hearken to my word. For these are not drunken, I'm going, I'm going somewhere. As ye suppose, seeing it, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah. And shall come past in the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall. Yeah. On my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall. And he said, I will show you wonders in heaven, blah. on and on and on and on and on. And he said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you know yourself also know. Him being delivered by the determinate council. This is the determinate council. I spoke about the determinate council. The determinate council talking about the Godhead. Him being de delivered by the determinate counsel yes, and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God had raised, having lost the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it, he should be holding of death. For David speaketh concerning him. For David speaketh concerning him. This, this is not my writing. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw, and I can even show you in the book of Psalms. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for his on my right hand, that I shall not be there for my heart, the rejoice, blah, blah, blah. If you go on, you see. You see, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he, both, he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Now, if you will read Genesis, when Adam fell, and God was speaking to the woman. He said, in Genesis 3, he said, Your seed shall bruise the, the serpent's head, and the serpent will bruise her seed. He was talking about Jesus. Head of her. What is that seed that has defeated the devil today? It's Jesus. He's the one that came and died and resurrected. And now we can shout in the name of Jesus, and yokes are broken. It's Jesus. So that's Jesus in, the, in the Genesis. And if you go to even if you, that, if you leave Genesis, you go to um, Ex, you go to Exodus, you see Jesus there. I can put if, if there was enough time, sincerely, there was enough time, I would open from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and I will point you, I will give you a picture, a mirror image of Jesus in all without mincing words. It's pointing about one person, Jesus. Hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, don't really do preaching church. They do emphasize on those things. Like the Bible itself is talking about the sum. Jesus itself is real. It's talking about the summary and Jesus itself. What's shocking about Muslims, like him and um, this yeah. man saying something like, if you believe in Jesus, like you say, our the Bible we have is talk about Jesus, the prophet mm -hmm. itself. You should like and um, follow his words. If you follow his words, why? It was some things not like like the important part like I am a father and one and stuff stuff like that. Why don't you follow like the begotten son? Why yeah. don't you believe like he came out from Jesus? 
Like mm. Jesus is the Son of God. Why don't yeah. you believe that? If you believe, if you follow the word of Jesus itself, mm. why then do you, don't you believe that word itself? Mm. According to when he was reading the Quran, it was like um, there's not God cannot have a son and stuff like that. Then if you believe in the story of Jesus, if you believe Jesus that he is the prophet that came, then his words are his only saying, I myself, I'm, I am my father one. one. I came. It's always referring like, I have been there been before there the before word before that voice. If you believe in Jesus, then why don't you believe in that word itself? I remember the other doctor, the other doctor we were talking about, he made mention of the fact that his birth was a miraculous birth. Yeah. Out of all the prophets, yes. why is it Jesus who came out from a virgin? From a virgin. You know, it's, it's something like you have to talk about. Why? Because if there are different prophets coming, why are they not coming out from, like, okay, different, okay, you saw, okay, you saw, why is it that Jesus himself is always picturing until tomorrow he's the only one that has, that there has been any kind of, but there are two men in this world that ever existed that were never giving birth to true normal human delivery Adam and Jesus sure and the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam because he never went through any the process of human birth where a man has to put a seed into a woman to produce him because even history proves it that at the time when Mary was carrying Jesus she was not yet she had not had any intercourse with any man she was a virgin she had not had any intercourse with any man. So how is it possible that it can only be by God? And so why are you having, why, why is there an issue of debate over the same topic? Same topic. Me talking to you now, I'm not talking to you out of the fact that there's a head knowledge. I'm talking to you by, by the Spirit of God talking through me. So I dare you to pick your Bible or pick the Bible and say, God, this Guide pastor me. is talking, whatever he's saying, I want you to prove it. And you sure, and surely, I'm sure God will give you a visitation. Certainly. It's the Bible. holy Bible. It's the only Bible. It's holy. It's not just a book. It's the holy Bible. Yes. So it's, it's obvious. And um, I truly like how you came about. You explained everything. You clarified everything. Um, people feel like, oh, uh, the pastor is deceiving you, he's not saying you do it. <laughs> it doesn't, I grew up with this. You see, hey, guys, wow. it's not that we are hearing the scriptures. I grew up with it. The Bible can never be set aside. It can never lie. So his words are yea and amen. It's For, forever, they are forever set. With. They are forever set. And I can, it's just a matter of time. I can actually speak out the life of Moses and tell you the story of Jesus in Moses. Sure. The Exodus bringing the people out of captivity into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Who is that person? It's not Jesus that died, died for us. Yeah. He came to bring us out of Egypt, bondage, into light. That's Jesus. Moses bringing the people out of, out of Egypt, yeah. destroying the powers of Egypt, the ten plagues and all. That's Jesus. That's a, it's a typo. It's a symbol. Most of the feats, feats you see in the Old Covenant, in the, in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, they are all symbols pointing out to Jesus. Even David spoke about it. Yes, I mean, Old Testament, spoke yeah. about Jesus as in the New Testament. Jesus, so, <laughs> it, it all goes accordingly, in line. So guys, comment down below what you think about it. And, and I would like to add something. You see, the reason why you know, some of them, you, you see some, some things like the book of... Um, Proverbs, the book of Sol the book of um, Solomon, the book of um, Psalms, and all that. Yeah. The reason why, uh, and the reason why it is Jesus, I'm, I'm saying it's Jesus because um, there is so much we can learn as to our life in the person of Jesus. So that's why God, by His wisdom, has broken it down like that. If you see Proverbs, Proverbs talks about some kind of family life, how to deal with people. Once you begin to um, ship yourself, you accept Jesus, Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, what begins to happen to you is that you begin to develop a kind of character, a kind of attitude. Then when you provide, discover your life is in that area, it's because it's Jesus. Jesus is the sum total of life. Jesus is the center of life. That's why all these stories, <laughs> all these lessons are there. Because in Jesus you find life. 
That one is about Jesus. That's true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> guys, comment down below, guys. Give us a thumbs up. Share this with us. Me, Nasca, subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. See you guys in the next video, guys. As always, thanks for coming. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all over.